Hello, this is Katherine Dubberly, the answer lady. I'm a big fan of KISS looms, and I am cooperating with Kelly at KISS to present to you a whole series of looming techniques, especially for KISS. We're going to do this on all sorts of KISS looms, so you get to see every basic technique on your own loom. Welcome and enjoy. Let's do the drawstring cast on on a small gauge KISS loom. Here I have it set up with two washers between the boards, the pins and the pegs that is, and 60 pegs in work. I do not start this cast on with a slip knot or a loop knotted into it. You can do so and then unknot it later, but I just like to anchor my yarn tail under the end of one board. Now we go around first peg, skip the second, and pretty much normally wrap every other peg all the way around the loom. When it's necessary to turn the corner, make sure you keep a hold of your yarn tail. That one was skipped, so it's time to wrap this one. And we'll go all the way around. And eventually, what we're doing here will create the drawstring. But you won't be able to see it for a while yet. That one was skipped, so I work this one. And on around. When all of them have been wrapped, or at least every other one all the way around the loom, I should say, has been wrapped, we will start wrapping a normal row. But let's get there first. Here we are, all the way around, wrapping every other peg. Now we begin a normal wrap all the way around the loom, wrapping every peg. Of course, now some pegs have two loops on them, and some only have one. Those that have two will be able to knit off normally. Those that have one, nothing can happen to them yet. This first one will be loose because it's attached to the yarn tail. Just pull the tail to tighten it up and go on around. The whole row may feel looser than usual, so control your yarn, making sure it goes over the peg but not over the pin. And that's going to feel especially true at the corners. So when you uh, hook over the corner stitches, just take a little bit of extra care. This is not any kind of big deal. I'm just telling you that it will feel a little different than subsequent rows and then you're used to the U-wrap stitch feeling. See how loose that one feels, but it'll knit properly. So we're going to go around the whole loom, wrapping the U-wrap normally, and then knitting over those pegs that contain two wraps. And I'll see you when I'm all the way around because there's a little more to discuss. I've now completed the first two rows. On one of the rows, we wrapped every other peg, but nothing got knitted because that would have been impossible. On the second row, I wrapped every peg and knitted over those pegs that contained two wraps, as pegs normally do when we knit. Now, the next row begins the real knitting with standard U-wrap stitch. You might still find the corner stitches a touch loose, but they're getting easier to deal with. And that first one still might need you to tug on the yarn tail. From this point on, the knitting is completely normal for quite a while until we go to draw in the cast on. So let's talk about doing that a little bit and why we even care that we can do it. The most obvious reason to use this is for knitting a crowned hat from the top down. I could knit this all the way down to the brim and say make a ribbed brim and bind that off, which is a very neat finish to the hat, then draw in the crown. So a top down hat is one thing. An ornament made from sock yarn that's variegated, you might want a drawstring top and bottom. Well, binding off with a drawstring is very easy. We just run a yarn tail on a yarn needle through every stitch and draw it in, and you probably know that already. 
we can get a drawn in end on both ends if we use this cast on and make a decorative ball like a Christmas ornament or something like that. Uh, they're also good for mobiles for baby rooms and stuffed animals. Sometimes you need both ends to draw in. Some kinds of pillows you might want that. So let me think what else. Uh, mittens, if we wanted to fingertip down mittens could be used with this drawstring cast on. Booties, toe up might be. I personally do not like it on toe up socks for an adult. I think that's too many stitches bunched up. But sometimes on slippers you don't care if that's the case. So that would be a possible use. However, hats is, would be the place that I personally use it most. And since we're talking hats, I'll tell you how to make this exact project into a hat. I have my loom set up, a small gauge loom, two washers between the boards, knitting with worsted weight, otherwise known as number four yarn, on 60 pegs. Generally, I get about four stitches per inch with this setup in most worsted weight yarns. You will probably find that your own gauge is close. It may not be exact because we all have our own styles and yarn choices. But at four stitches per inch, 60 pegs will knit a hat that's 15 inches around. So that's a hat for a small child. The bottom one to two inches should be ribbing. And I am generally getting with this setup about five rows per inch. So that would be five to ten rows that I would knit as rib at the very end of the project. That means that in order to make a hat that would fit a small child, which is generally six inches from the top of the crown to the bottom of the brim, six times five, that's five rows per inch, would be 30 rows needed. And so I subtract my ribbing length, say I'm doing 10 rows of ribbing, that would tell me to do 20 rows as I am doing them now before changing to ribbing. And that's all there is to making this kind of hat. If I were making one for myself, I would prefer it to be 21 inches around. 21 times 4, my stitches per inch gauge, is 84. So I would need longer sides and set up with 84 pegs working. Then an adult hat for a woman is generally 8 inches from the very top of the crown where we're going to gather in to the very bottom edge. If I'm getting my same 5 rows per inch, 8 times 5 is 40, so I need a total of 40 rows. On an adult hat, you might want from 1 to 3 inches of ribbing, so I may make as many as 15 rows of ribbing. And I would subtract that 15 from my 40. And if my math is correct, that would be 25 rows of knitting in plain U-wrap stockinette, as I'm doing now, 15 in ribbing, and then bind off for a lady's hat. Uh, men are often needing a little bit bigger hat, sometimes 9 inches long sometimes 22 inches around. When you're knitting hats, keep in mind that we don't all like them to fit the same way. My head actually measures 21 inches around, and I like my hats to measure 21 inches around. Some people think that's sloppy feeling, and they prefer their hats two inches smaller than their real head measurement. They want it to stretch and feel snug. That makes me hot and itchy, and I don't care for it and that you find both opinions widely prevalent. So it does help to know not only the size of your wearer, but the tastes of your wearer. It also, I think, depends on the weather. I live in the South. We get chilly days and we want a hat, but we're not trying to keep 40 below weather off our ears. It's easy for the hat to become too restrictive feeling. If I lived in Wisconsin, I might like a different fit. Never have lived there and not planning to. But that is a thing that people deal with. So I'm going to keep on knitting this children's hat. 
until I have knitted it on down and I can show you how the drawstring works. I'll see you then. There is enough knitting on the loom now that you should be able to see what happens when we draw it in. Have a look. This is the cast on and it is not very beautiful, but that's not its job. It's not going to stay looking like this. Here is my initial yarn tail and I'm going to be pulling on it with my left hand as you watch what's going on inside the loom. Here comes our cast on drawing together. Now if I had more knitting on it, it would draw in all the way to a tiny, tiny O. And what I would do is draw it in as tightly as I could, then use this yarn tail, thread it into a yarn needle, to stitch across the O a couple of times. Of course, by this time, the O is just about as big as the point on this tool. It's tiny and tight. I would stitch across, knot it, and then use the remainder of the yarn tail, if I had a seam, to seam it. Don't have a seam here. So what I'm going to do is just bury it by weaving it in and out. The reason for the knotting at the top of the hat is that this one strand of yarn is the only thing holding it together. And in the middle of the winter, you certainly don't want the hat coming undone and exposing your head. So I think that a little bit of knotting across the O makes good sense. I've knitted a few more rows. You can see my knitting is longer because I do want you to be able to see how the O at the top or whatever it is, top or bottom, will completely close up. And here we go. Pulling all the way in. This is the purl side. Here's the knit side, which is what we normally use as the right side, though we don't have to. And you can see there's no longer any space in there. Nets I would take my yarn to the inside and stitch across as I described earlier but from the inside so I didn't see yarn strands out here.